Whether it's bad planning, bad luck, bad timing, or bad inventions, well-intentioned bad decisions have plagued history for thousands of years. Welcome to Historic Hindsight. Hello and welcome to another episode of Historic Hindsight. I'm John, that's Tom, and today we're going to talk to you about the Ford Ranger. The Ford Ranger? Where did you get the Ford Ranger from? Out of what we were... Ford? Fort, Fort, what we? Fort Wagner. Fort Wagner. Wagner. I know oh. that truck. That's okay. a poor fucking yeah. ranger. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, yes. The, the, I don't know the, that song. The Battle of Fort Wagner. Fort, so Fort Wagner. Fort Wagner. Okay, that makes more sense that we would be dressed like this if we're doing, I just thought Wrangler or something. I um, which so this Fort, is. Battles of Fort Wagner. Fort Wagner. Where's Fort Wagner? Uh, this is a complete, by the way, this is a complete shout out. This was suggested to us on our on our, one of our intro video that we're talking about our channel. Somebody said do the Battle of Fort Wagner. So we'll do the, there you go. I guess, skirmish of Fort Wagner is probably a more appropriate word. But not an actual <laughs> battle or what? No, it is, but it's not a big battle. Uh, it's a, okay. uh, so Fort Wagner is a, is, is one of the series of forts that's around Charleston Harbor that protects, you know, Charleston from, uh, from, invasion it's supposed to be designed when it was a part of the union uh, as a protection of the, the the harbor itself because charleston was a very big import export zone in the united states uh, you know along with like new york and new orleans yeah okay so obviously civil war whereabouts in the civil so war? so we're in the civil war so it, it occurs between july 10th and 18th of 1863 so mid-war okay that's i mean that's a Week long, yeah, it's a skirmish. It's a week. Well, yeah, it's a week long hey, skirmish, babe. and uh, you know, it's right after the fall of Gettysburg and Vicksburg, so the Confederacy's on the heels. It's pretty much looking like it's going to be an end, and I, if I'm a betting man, the war is going to be over any minute now, right? There's I no mean, way be, it's going to drag on for another two years. That'd be impossible. With how strong the Union is and how weak the Confederate is, this was probably the last battle, right? <laughs> uh, so the whole point of the forts, like I said, was to protect the harbor. But with the Union blockade, Charleston Harbor became kind of a moot point, anyways. So the only reason just because nothing could get nothing to could it? get yeah nothing could get to it. So these anyway. these forts don't matter. So they you can't right. get anything to it. So okay. Uh, the only thing it would do would be prevent a sea land based uh, invasion of Charleston, but. Um, you know, you could just invade it from the inland. It's not like it's right that big of a deal. Yeah, I mean, and how big a navy does the South have? <laughs> not much. Um, right. Now, the like I said, like the only potential for the forts would be to protect Charleston from a, a sea land invasion because they're too far, especially Fort Wagner. It's too far out from Charleston to be like effective at like bombarding any invading forces that's approaching Charleston from the from the land. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it it's kind of a pointless thing but for whatever reason the union army gets it in their head that we need to take all these forts back specifically okay. fort sumpner that we lost a while ago and the only way we can get fort sumpner back is if we take these smaller forts that are around fort sumpner out first so uh yeah well i mean eventually they want to take everything back well so yeah you, might as well, I mean, you gotta kind of start somewhere right and so they started with all of these little forts so the, the the grand union plan here is to to attempt to expel the Confederate troops from these forts one by one. In early June, Brigadier General Quincy A. Gilmore, an Army engineer, Johnny, had successfully okay. taken over Fort Pulaski uh, a year earlier in April 1862. Next on his list is Fort Wagner, and by taking these forts, he'd hoped to turn the guns on Fort Sumner in order to free the harbor for Union ships uh, to uh, basically take over Charleston and then reopen that harbor for import exports of their own. Okay. Um, <clears throat> fort Wagner itself sat on Morris Island, uh, which is uh, which is known as a beachhead fort because it uses a combination of natural sandbars that are 30 nice. feet high, Johnny, 30 feet high Woo! sandbars, and a man-made bomb shelters to protect its 14 cannons, including a 10-inch Columbiad smoothboard cannon that fires a whopping 128-pound shell. So that's their big boy oh, gun. Hundred. That's like a medium-sized high school. <laughs> yeah, that was that. That's not a medium-sized high schooler. I'm pretty oh sure God. that was me in high school. Take a little. I wrestled at 125. Yeah, take a little. My junior year. Yeah, take a little prospector Johnny or a little Lieutenant Tommy in high school and throw us in the cannon and huck us out. Like that's. Yeah, that's I'm, I'm going to say right now that that cannon is not getting me very far these days. Oh no, no, I'm <laughs> I'm a scotch over that mark. 
Uh, it was uh, The fort itself was built in a way that the only point of land attack was through a narrow 60-yard wide stretch of beach that laid between the ocean and a marsh. Uh, Wait making... a minute. This is like that, uh, that, that Roman thing, right? The, the, there's a battle where they like funnel them into a thing. Uh, they get funneled uh, are you into thinking? A... Are you thinking of that three hundred or something? That movie three hundred. Yes, it wasn't Roman. It was uh, it was Greek. The Spartacus. And okay. They, yeah. yeah, they, yeah. The, the, whatever. Yeah. That that thing. Yeah. So is that like is that kind of yeah? What we're you've got you've got it. You've got to funnel. Yeah. You've got a funnel a... killing zone before it opens up to. I mean, once you get through that Look narrow that, stretch of land, you can attack the forts from multiple sides. But the only way to get to the fort is this sixty yard stretch, which you could only bring one regiment in at a time. Right. So, whatever. How do you like that historical connection? I, I'm, I made? I'm pretty impressed. I, I, I was Jeremy. able to relate good. from one historical thing to another. Now, they happened happen. around the same time, though, right? Yeah. They were like, you know, so, a couple thousand. It was like just kind of how battles were being done at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, they could get one regiment in at a time. So, it doesn't matter how time, much so the Union nothing. has for troop numbers. Like, you're limited yeah. on what you can get in at a time. So, right. It's a really kind of a brilliantly set up fort. Um, by the way, Johnny, it also makes for a perfect killing ground, not not only for the funneling zones, but they have what are called yep. palmetto stakes that are around the fort, which are basically wooden spikes that are facing at okay. you that you kind of have to uh, 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 meangle your way through that'll slow you down. Yeah. They also have literal moat that's built around the fort so that you have nice. to go into the water and then over these palmetto stakes. Yep. And they have landmines, Johnny. Fucking landmines that are... That they are, had landmines? Yes. Johnny, the Civil War had... You name it. It pretty much had it. Like, anything that's in the modern war, minus, like, nukes. So why don't we hear more about the landmines? Were they just not, they're not impactful or they're used not, much? They're or? not as impactful. It's not, I mean, they, they, had, they had mines. They had hand grenades. They had missiles. They had aerial, you know, they had an air, not an air force, but they had aerial balloon had observations. Balloons. Yeah. Uh, you know, they had accurate artillery pieces. I mean, they pretty much, they didn't have tanks, but, you know. Outside of that, like most of the modern, you think of modern in in, in war, they they had most of that. It's now, and this crazy. is all fair, fairly new stuff, which is why everything was they were bad at using it and employing it, and it was such a deadly. Yeah, war and it's yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, you're like, yeah, this is great. I got this hand grenade. What's it do? I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, and then. Ten people are dead. Yeah, ten people are dead. Well, the hand grenades actually, like, we're getting way off track, but I'm going to talk about it anyways. The hand grenades look kind of like a Nerf Nerf ball, like, you know, the Nerf balls with the, uh, the vor fan. vortex. The vortex ones, yes. Yeah. So you had this you had this steel, uh, you know, football-looking, like, thing with a plunger on uh -huh. one end and a wood wood fin, and you'd huck this, and when the plunger hit, it would just blow up. They're, they're cool oh, yeah. as shit. Uh, That's I, awesome. You know, I wish laws were a way where I could make one, but, you know, whatever. Don't do that. No, no, I no. Said, government. I he said, does not wish he could I said, make. A I bomb. wish. That's all. I wish That's, I could. Not, I'm not gonna. We're not. I wish I. He could. doesn't have any of the parts. Well, we. Well, my brother is nope. making a fake. That's fake. We're one. fine. A fake we're fine. One. That's, a fake one. It doesn't. It won't work. It's fake. Johnny, you're so concerned. It, the fort itself Moving was on. garrisoned for, with with 1,700 troops and seemed to be a pretty stout defensive position. Like I, but here's a kicker. It's on an island, right? Yeah. So um. Wouldn't it make more sense just to cut the island off of supplies and, I don't know, like, wait? Just just not let other people get to it? Maybe guard that little path that into it? Yeah, just like... And not let other people come yeah, in? Yeah, just like, and wait. Surround and just, it with the... Eventually, they're going to get hungry. And eventually, they're going to leave because they're hungry. Uh, but the, for, the first... No, I think I think probably what they should do is just take all of their troops and continue to file them in through that 60-yard gap. Well, you're not too far off of what actually happened. So now, Brigadier General Gilmore's plan was to invade Morse Island, surround the fort with the 2nd Division of the 10th Corps, known as the, uh, the Department of the South. Uh, once surrounded, they would conduct a bombardment of the fort from Union ironclads because at this point... The North has discovered, man, if you take those old wooden sailboats and you put a steam engine on them and you plate them with iron, like, nothing that we have can penetrate them right now. So they're like this invincible fort. Because it's iron-coated, yeah. giant, thick this, wood, yeah. heavy wood. Yeah, this <laughs> iron-coated boat that's just floating out there. <laughs> it's amazing. We will talk about the Battle of the Monitor in, in the Miramac later. Because that's like when the Confederates ironclad and the Union ironclad like fired for th like three days at each other and nothing <laughs> happened. <laughs> ding, 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 yeah. ding, 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 we'll talk about that later. But so they have some of these ironclads here and they're going to bombard the fort with those ironclads and then a full frontal assault because yes. that's 
the go-to yeah, tactic. Right up the gut, where they'll never see <laughs> they'll us coming. Never, they'll never see us coming. So on July 10th, the Union ironclads began bombarding uh, Folly Island, which is another series of forts, and the southern approach to Morris Island uh, as kind of a distraction. Uh, Gilmore is able to land uh, his Brigadier General George C. Strong's brigade on the island. The, the, the landing does go successful. Oh, uh, all right. We're in. We're in. We're on the island. Strong uh, lands and attacks the Confederate positions on the southern portion of the island, uh, coming under fire from Confederate cannons that they were able to secure, including three 10-inch seacoast mortars. So everything on the south portion of this island that was the defended portion, uh, we, yeah. we got their whole batteries, everything there. So now That's great. we can just take those batteries and turn them against the just fort. Push. Just whip them yeah, around. Flip it around. Flip it around, which they do. Yeah. There's four guys on each corner. Pick it up. Turn it and put it down. And, and I mean, shooting. ten inch seacoast mortars are <laughs> some pretty big gun. That's like the bore is ten inches. You're hucking like oh, a, the bore. What, the bore is see, ten. You, inch. you always you always say like these these measurements and shit, and, and expect me to know what that means. The bore. I figure ten inch. It's like a gun that big. No, no, the the bore, the <laughs> hole, the hole out of the, the gun. Is where the, the shooty stuff comes from. The shooty from stuff comes as 10, 10 inches. inches. Okay. So the round that's significant the round explosive yeah. ball that's coming out is 10 inches in diameter. That's a that's a big that's a that's, big that's a big gun. Yeah, that's significant. Um uh, Gilmore's you know and again this is where I'm talking about like at this point just bombard the fort and just wait. Just shell them every day and eventually they'll surrender. But no, yep. uh, Gilmore he's not a patient man and on July 11th he orders Strong's brigade to attempt to take the fort. Strong would make the only approach to the fort that you can, which is through that narrow stretch of beach, you know, sea swamps. And and nobody saw it coming, and it went well, and they overtook the fort. Yeah, well, to be fair, though, they they are under the cover of fog, so at least he's got a little ah. bit of, you know, like, it's a, it isn't the easiest thing to see him. The 7th Connecticut Infantry was uh, was able to overrun the initial rifle pits that were, uh, that were at the fort, so they do get into the initial, like, first line of defenses of the fort. But... You know, once you get to those first line of defenses, you still got the seventeen hundred other Confederates that are behind yeah. it that are shooting yeah. at you, and, uh, and, and and they're all probably laughing. So like, aha, that's our trap. We'll distract <laughs> him up there with those troops that we don't care about, and then just bomb everybody or cannon everybody or whatever they're doing. Hand grenade, Nerf gun them. The other the other problem is the way the fort set up is once you get into those initial defenses, you've got cannons that are in the fort, the howitzers, like little, little tiny cannons that are able to yeah. like. <laughs> Yeah, just, yeah. Shoot down at you. They don't even. They don't even have to really aim. Like, no, those it's, are. It's not like they had. They'd have to like turn it maybe a little bit or like come different direct. Like it's yeah, just. Yeah, it's a big shotgun. Like, they, they have it set where it's going into this general area. Mm -hmm. and we're just gonna start shooting it, and it's gonna hit somebody yeah. because. All of their troops are right there. <laughs> yeah, because we're not like this isn't small squad tactics. This is everybody moving, <laughs> move in at one point. <laughs> Let's forward. go. So artillery fire from the fort prevented Strong from sending any. And in any additional uh, regiments to reinforce the seventh. Okay, well at least that's good. At least he, at least he didn't look at it and be like, well, you know what, this is going well. Let maybe if we just overwhelm them, they'll run out of bullets. Well, yeah, that's so the seventh Connecticut basically the first regiment in is like left to their own devices. They're like, ah, uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry guys, we can't. Their artillery is too good. We can't send any good. Run, run, <laughs> turn around. It's not going well. So the end of the first battle was a pointless blind rush by one regiment, resulting in 49 Union killed, which is, this is where I say this is a skirmish. These numbers are small, and they're going to continue I mean, to be small. I mean, 49 killed when you're just getting bombarded with... Artillery is not bad. Artillery is not, not bad. terrible, so, I suppose. So 49 Union killed, 123 Union, Union wounded, 167 are missing, which are captured uh and the confederate forces oh, lost. not not just <laughs> well, you can't bounce. you can't really turn around and bounce you're on an <laughs> island you're gonna, gonna, go. gonna, go. gonna, go. gonna start swimming <laughs> maybe uh, the confederate forces lost their 12 men oh my god that so was that's probably friendly fire that's not very yes <laughs> it might have been <laughs> Like it's just they happen to get. Damn it, uh, they Carl! Started the artillery I told you, you gotta aim that way. And I'll wait till we retreat and then fire. Uh, so now at this point, you might be wondering why are we talking about a battle that is seemingly small in grand scheme of the Civil I mean, War? Because it really is. Well, Johnny, that's because of the movie Glory. I guarantee you, who who requested this was because they watched Glory and they wanted us to do a video on the battle that that ends the, end the, ends the movie Glory. Which okay, so I've I've heard of this movie. I've never seen it. Yeah. Um, 
So I actually thought it was like a World War II movie. <laughs> uh, wrong about that, <laughs> right. apparently. So, uh, so if you don't know the movie Glory, like like Johnny at home, let me give you a brief description of it. It's it's about the 54th Massachusetts, which is an African American regiment or colored regiment, if you want to use the the terms that they used back then. African American now. I'm trying not to be a dick and be offensive. Uh, led by Matthew Broderick. I mean, uh, I mean Colonel Robert Gould Shaw, not Matthew. Colonel Broderick. Matthew. Matthew, Matthew Broderick. Broderick. Colonel Matthew Broderick in the movie. Uh, in reality, led by Colonel Robert uh, Gould Shaw. So this is a time when okay. the uh, the Union decided, like, hey, if we're all about freeing slaves, maybe we should let, and we, you know, maybe we should let let them fight for us if they want. But right. but let's not get too crazy. We don't we don't actually. Th they're not smart enough to lead themselves. So we still have to have the white no. men, white men be the officers. So so the commissioned well, officers also... will be white. But the uh, but the colored troops they're gonna they're gonna they can't be an officer. So the, yeah, the colored troops. Notice it wasn't just we can let them fight with us and and join it. This was separate. No, separate before separate so, but equal. Yeah, this is separate. <laughs> like, they can't. You can't have that 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 the, those colored troops, the African American troops. They're not going to be intermixed with white troops. We can't do that. No, no, no. they're going to have their own regiment. Nonsense. They're going to have They'll their be own led regiment. by white men. Yeah, they're, they're going to have their own I regiment mean, led by white men. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Who will definitely be looking out for their best interests so all the time? So this movie is about is about this regiment, which it is a good movie. Uh, I make fun of it a lot because it's it's like in in modern context, like it's a very old filmed movie, but, so it doesn't yeah. necessarily hold up the same way in modern context. But it is a good movie. Um, so the failure of the first assault uh, uh, from Gilmore did not, uh, you know, go as go as planned. So so Gilmore does the reasonable thing and decides to starve the Confederate troops out. And by starve the Confederate troops out, he says we're gonna. Do it again, yes. the same plan over again. It's got to work better the second time. But this, but this time, Johnny, his plan is to uh, to use the ironclads to to bombard for a longer period of time. We'll just bombard the fort oh, for longer. That was what the we issue was. We won't just shoot like five <laughs> rounds at him. We'll bombard him. We'll bombard him for longer. So he moves. Guys, we definitely would have been able to get past all of their artillery fire if you just would have bombarded them for. You know, two more hours. Yeah. So the plan is we're going to move the ironclads within 300 yards of the fort and just bombard them uh, for about eight hours, nine hours straight. Just just, just shell the shit out of them. So Gilmore would reinforce Strong's Brigade, uh, which consisted of the 54th Massachusetts, which is our which is our stars oh, yes, of the right. show, the okay. 6th Connecticut, the 48th New York, the 3rd New Hampshire, the 76th Pennsylvania, and the 9th Maine, with a 2nd Brigade underneath Colonel Haldemand S. Putman. Putnam. Putnam, Putnam, Putnam County, Putnam County. I've Putnam. heard of that. Yeah, Putnam County. Probably, probably name for him. I doubt it. <laughs> but you never know. Now, according to the movie Glory, a great speech was given about the importance of taking Fort Wagner, about how like we have to take this fort because it's the only way we can get Charleston, and Charleston is 100% vital to the war effort. And if we don't do this, then the war is lost. Which all of that's like not true. Oh, right? that's fucking bullshit. Like it's really <laughs> fucking. This is a this is a bullshit side thing on a side thing that really didn't matter. And unless then he the, asked, unless the North got bored with it, this war was not going to be lost. Like unless they decided we don't want to do it anymore. Yeah, yeah. Unless they decided, <laughs> yeah, we don't want to. Eventually, the South is just gonna be like, all right, we don't have anything now. So, so yeah, complete bullshit about the importance of this, but. There was also this great speech about who will be the volunteers to take to be the first regiment through this murder field to take to take the the first regiment Can I in. Guess? Can I guess who, who volunteers? <laughs> you got it, Johnny. And the movie, I think everybody else guessed. And the movie Robert Gould <laughs> Shaw's like, what? Yeah, we'll do it. We'll take would the colored troops want to prove how brave they are. So we will. Is that we what it will, is? We will go right through. We're the number one. We'd love to do it. And in, and in the movie, the 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 the, the leading guy is like, you guys haven't slept for a couple of days. Are you sure you can do it? And and Matthew Broderick, I mean Colonel Shaw is like, yes, yeah. we got this. We're brave. We'll we'll take a nap tonight before the there, there it is yeah get good sleep because uh, so i imagine i imagine since there's a movie made they were probably heroes of this battle and they won it uh for the north mm. yeah a hundred percent uh in, oh, in so episode over in re, yeah, yeah in re, re, episode nothing over. bad happened in, in reality what happened is is colonel oh, no. shaw did volunteer but he volunteered his troops to go on to a suicide mission uh oh. and all the other white troops were like Damn. Why, that's not me. 
I'm not doing that shit. Those boys are crazy. This is, when, this is when your boss comes in and is like, hey, who wants to work Saturday? And everybody's like, I'm going to sink down real low because I don't want to be seen. <laughs> and then there's that one guy who's new who thinks he's going to become a supervisor or something. He's like, I don't do it. And you're like, oh, fucking uh, it, it, thank you, God. Well, so it's a little bit more like that guy's like, I know who should do it. These people should. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, to make matters worse about this whole volunteering to be cannon fodder thing, um, yeah, yeah. when when the Confederate uh, Congress learned about uh, African-American troops being deployed as soldiers in the North, uh, they they issued a law directive that uh, any any colored troop uh, would be treated as a criminal and, and sold back into slavery. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. So anybody captured is your. No, I mean, it's I, better dead than captured. I am for a lot of these people, right? Yeah, like, I am not. I'm not going to discredit any of of the bravery because the, the the 54th Massachusetts did a fantastic job at this battle. Got cut to crap, and and I mean they and had were, no I mean they were bra- <laughs> like, they were they were they they legitimately were very brave, and they a lot of good things come out of their sacrifice here. Uh, yeah, with all that. No, it, but there is a lot to be said for that death before slavery yeah, type with, with that, thing. Like, yeah, they're with not that going said, to get captured. Yeah, with that said, I'm not, I don't, like, I mean, if I was a former slave that's now a soldier, I'm like, I don't want to go back to that life, so, uh, no, I'm, so I'm, can I'm I not? take as many of them can with I, me. Can I not, can I not go? <laughs> or, or, yeah, can I take as many as I can with me? I mean, at, at this point, like, they were volunteered. They're in the yeah, regiment. They yeah, have yeah, to go. Like, yeah. you, they don't have the choice to just be like, I oh, don't know, I'm going to go and just run away and hide because... I mean, how's that going to look? Well, Johnny, and, and, and again, like we talked about earlier, where are they going to go? Okay, Johnny, that runaway and hide thing, keep that in the back of your mind because there's, oh there's going to be something. That, no, 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 not on the north, on the Confederate side. There's going to be something that comes back up on okay, that. So just, right. just keep that, just keep that in the, you know, in the back of the, yeah. back of the. I'll head do my there. best. So the assault is going to begin on July 18th. Uh, Gilmore is going to order that a naval bombardment from six monitor ironclad warships begin. Uh, and they were pulled within, like I said, 300 yards of the fort. The bombardment lasts for eight hours, Johnny. Eight hours. Jesus. The noise of it all. Just, I mean, God. A, a annoyance. A, imagine yeah. going to work and being annoyed at work for eight hours. But yep. but instead of just being annoyed at work for eight hours, it's loud banging and shit blowing up around you and well, dust flying up in the air and people losing arms. Like it's got it's got to be like working like trying to get work done uh, in a building with a tin roof during a hailstorm. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> like just noise and loudness and and yeah and every once in a while somebody next to you blows up but this bombardment johnny it's completely and totally ineffective uh because that that, that 30 foot that 30 foot high because <laughs> they're shooting in the they're sand. shooting in the sand <laughs> so even with an explosive round you shoot in the sand it blows up it just it just it just it absorbs it, it just, like that's what like, sand does it's like okay <laughs> Like, don't they use sandbags for, like, backstops they and do. stuff? They like, do. Yes, <laughs> they do. So uh, so after this eight-hour bombardment, only eight Confederates were killed and 20 wounded. So, uh, so Oh, my God. You, you made a dent. Imagine the money wasted for this bombardment for just I would. I would deaths. love to know uh, the uh, shells or whatever the artillery, the cannonballs whatever yeah, the hell the uh, just the number of how many to what kill you know oh, it, it, one it's person just, or injure just, a person just awful it's got to be just yeah, thousands just and thousands for like one for just this particular yeah, yeah. oh yeah uh, so the assault itself is going to begin at 7 45 p.m like i said after eight hours of shelling so we start shelling around noon then we go in now see this is more my type of battle i can get down for with the 7 45 p.m like battle? Yeah. let me sleep in during the day yeah ma i gotcha the 54th Massachusetts would stack, you know, they would go th- through this 60 yep. yard stretch and then just keep going straight. So their goal is <laughs> they go through this, they go through this thing and just we're going, you're going straight. So it's, I just mean, this straight. is like, this is like a kamikaze mission. This is, they're just going to, yeah. we're coming straight in and we're getting it done. Yeah, and behind them, there's a, a multi prong approach because behind them, the rest of the regiments are supposed to kind of fan out. And, and attack more of the southern southern salient okay. positions where some southern artillery positions are. So they go through the, the but they all still have to go through this narrow sixty yards. Right. Stretch. Everybody goes there, but then the sixty fourth keeps going and everybody else kind yep. of yep. comes 50, out. Fifty fourth, yes. Yep. Fifty fourth. Yeah. So when the fifty fourth uh fifty fourth Massachusetts the Boston accents and the best part of the movie <laughs> if you don't like what we're doing, maybe you shouldn't be a part of it. 
<laughs> from that part of the movie. We're gonna do Broderick? That's yeah, that's Matthew Broderick. At some point we're gonna do a we're gonna do a review of the movie because I'm gonna make Johnny watch it and we'll do a review of it. But <sighs> Good, I love that. <laughs> but anyways, when they get within 150 yards of the fort, they receive fire from the fifty first North uh, uh Carolina division, and uh they're also gonna receive fire from uh, from their left from the Charleston battalion. So God. they're getting they're getting infilade fire. Yeah. Which is the fire you don't want to get because that's the fire on your bad side, your weak side. Yeah. So that's just taking out everybody down the line. And you're getting yeah. fire from from straight on. But somehow, somehow they miraculously, the 54th is able to reach the parapet, which is that, that, that you know, get through the whole, they get through the moat, the, the moat. They got through the moat? They get through the mines, they get through God the moat, damn. they climb up, they get around the whole spiky, spiky woody things, and they yeah. get up onto the parapet, and they start firing down into the into the rifle pit, and they start getting themselves engaged. They're like, hand to hand, they're like, yeah, we're going to yeah. Yeah, we'll take as many of you fuckers out as we can. The yeah. 48th New York is also able to uh, to get over the parapet uh, down farther south. All right. And they're, But they're the only other regiment that's able to get uh. through that. So two oh. regiments isn't two, gonna take two over regiments, the whole fort. Yeah, two regiments are are into the first. Yeah, into the fort, in, into the basic entry le- level of the fort. The rest of them are uh, are being cut to shit. Yeah, yeah. because all, uh, I assume artillery fire. And because just... once you get through that sailing, like once you get to that initial sixty yards, you got those howitzers that are pouring yep. canister rounds into them mm-hmm. as they approach, just cutting them to hell. Colonel Putman quickly brings up his brigade, but only about one hundred or two hundred men from the sixty second and sixty seventh Ohio reaches the bastion, where like to be able to even remotely assist the forty eighth and fifty yeah. fourth, because the rest of them are cut to shit. Before right, they even yeah, get, that couple hundred men's not, again. Again, not going to. There's 1,700 not, no. Confederates in there. Now, each regiment yeah. at full strength should be 1,000 men, but yep. they're, they're not at full strength. Yeah, they're not at full strength. No. And they're, def- and they're well, definitely not at full strength once they get above the, once they get yeah. above the parapet. So. Yeah, I was going to say, even if they started their march in at full strength, <laughs> by that time, they're not at full and strength. Yeah, and I'm not. guessing they were not at full strength to start. The Confederates try to take the initiative uh, and twice counterattack and twice are repelled. Uh, so basically they're going and attacking the troops as they come up, but they're getting repelled. Okay. So uh, so they learn very quickly, like, we don't really have enough men to do this. Maybe we'll just sit where <laughs> uh, we're at. Like, why? Maybe just defend because it's easier That's the thing. just That's keep the thing. shooting them. When you're in a fort... Just stay defend. In it. Just stay in it. <laughs> just defend. Don't 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 counterattack. Just just stay in it. Yeah. Until until you see the white flag and them running hauling ass backwards. Maybe yeah. if you have some ponies, maybe send the ponies out to cut them like as they're running away. Do the very honorable right. thing. And <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, yeah, like the South's gonna be honorable. <laughs> that I was that was, that was a joke because it's not honorable. To, that's what the cavalry is used for a lot at this time. Is like as they're running away, you cut you cut. They them. did that a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah you cut oh, you cut them down as they're running away. I thought that was like one of the no no. Like they they re, so they refuse to chase and follow and like overtake places, but they'll send a couple people just to go and hack some legs and shit. Yeah, you send, the, you, send the, you, send cool. the, you send the ponies out to do that. Uh, Cur- <laughs> uh, Colonel Putman uh, it quickly brings up his brigade, like I said, but only a hundred a hundred of those guys got there. So uh, so really right now it's just the 48th and the 54th in hand-to-hand combat uh, in the fort, looking around going, is anybody... <laughs> Is anybody else coming? Can somebody please? I poke like five guys with a bayonet, and I'm getting really tired. I could use a nap. OSHA violations to be had. Yeah. There's oh, workplace the safety. No kidding. Well, and just the hours they're keeping is, is where's, too much. Where's my union? I need my mandatory union 15-minute <laughs> break. Uh, <laughs> Confederate forces were able to actually sneak in some reinforcements from the 32nd Georgia, which snuck in on small from, boats. Um, you know, because all of our people bombarding ran out of their ammo and couldn't see the small boats to destroy them on their way. I, ge- in. I guess. <laughs> I guess you can't see a God. rowboat rowing up to an island, but they're able to sneak in some reinforcements from the 32nd Georgia, and, and as these reinforcements come yeah. in, well, that's 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 about all she writes. And yeah. uh, and they push out the remaining 48th and 54th Massachusetts from the fort. And by 10 p.m., the assault has faltered. Okay, so some of them were able to retreat. This wasn't just a, yes. a so slaughter. Yes, so now this is where I have a problem with the captured. movie. The movie Glory makes you think that, like, 
everybody from the 54th Massachusetts just died. Because you get this great yeah. scene at the end of it where, like, you know, Matthew Broderick's dead and Morgan Freeman's dead and Denzel Washington's dead. Everybody's fucking dead. But you get, you get like, uh, you get the As You Wish guy from, from, from The Princess Bride. He's like, yeah. he's like, we're charging! And he, char and you think they're going to take over the fort and they, like, they, they, like, they're, like, yeah. running and then all of a sudden yeah. they round this corner and there's a bunch of Confederates and they, and they fire at him and then the movie, like... And it makes you think that they all got murdered and died. Massacred, yeah, but of course that's yeah. not. I mean, so I, but again, it's that it's that uh, Braveheart. Uh, uh, they may take our lives, but they, they will never, never take, take our freedom. freedom. Yeah, that's great. That's and really then great. and then a lot of them realize, oh well, actually, uh, we can not let them take our lives, and then just also retreat and find another not way. let them take our freedom. Yeah. So we, let's do there's that. There's options here. You can <laughs> retreat is usually not like, unless you're defending a fixed position where like you can't, like if you're on the fort, retreat wasn't yeah, back to the wall you. or something. Yeah, if you're in a fort, the retreat's not the option because you're, but like if you're the attacking guys, you can always yeah. retreat. Yeah, just throw the. You know what? You know what? We'll come back later. Come right, back guys. later. We were not, we were not ready for this. So we're so we're okay. But I imagine the casualties were still not not uh, great. We're up uh, to the great. we're up to the aftermath, Johnny. So so General George Strong, he was mortally wounded in the battle in the thigh by a canister round while attempting to thigh rally his men. Thigh by a canister. Yeah, round. thigh by God. canister. So he just bled out. So he just bled just out a, while that, while trying to yeah, while trying yeah. to rally rally all the men. You know, fifty fourth everybody because he's the he's Ouch. the. Uh, Matthew another bl another bloody boot situation. Another bloody boot situation. Matthew Broderick, I mean Colonel Strong, he's going to be killed when the fifty fourth crested the parapet. So as he's, you know, as they're cresting that first oh, line of defense, yeah. he gets he gets gunned down. Although yeah. in the movie, he doesn't even he doesn't even get he doesn't even get that. Oh part. really? Yeah. They don't even give him that. They Come they on. kill him at the movie? they kill him at the bottom. Like you get you get uh, you get the guys like picking up the flag. You get you get I think it's Denzel Washington. He picks up the flag and he's all like, We're on! and they all get murdered. Uh, yeah, so people, that's so, so, so okay. So they just needed somebody else to take the charge in the movie to. No, Matt. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Anyways, that's why they um, killed him. Anyway. <laughs> we'll, need, we'll talk about that when we watch the movie. You need as you wish to take the charge, Johnny. Come on. Uh, and. Uh, and uh, uh, um, uh, Colonel uh, Hal Haldimand Putnam, he's going to be shot in the head, a uh, Union general, or not general, but Union colonel is going to be shot in the head, uh, when he's Did, trying to get okay? his men, yeah, no, no, he's trying to get his men to withdraw. <laughs> Imagine this, you're the guy going, we got to retreat, you got to retreat, We're the time out, time out, time <laughs> shot in the head, yeah. down. Yeah, I He's, mean, that, if that's uh, not a C, I told you so. See, I don't I told know what you it so. is. Like, <laughs> I told you we got to get the hell out of here. He gets shot in the head. And uh, Union Colonel John Chatfield, he's also going to be mortally wounded. So we lose, we lose like... A lot of leaders. We lose a general and three colonels. That's not a good day. Not a good day. No. And, okay, and then, so how many... Uh, casualties and, and deaths and everything did, did we suffer? So, and how, how many were we able to inflict once we broke the... So, yep, 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 yep. So we got the, ca the casualty report. Oh, oh! Whoop, whoop. We, should, we should come up with some kind of, like, song or something for our casualty reports in these I think episodes. Just did. But anyways, got it. so... Uh, of the I'll loop it. Of, yeah. <laughs> of the 5,000 Union troops engaged, uh, they would lose 246 killed. 800 yeah, okay union okay yeah, union 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 guys 246 are killed outright killed. 880 are wounded and 389 missing which are basically captured or later would die of Man. those if they are colored i or you know african american i i wonder um what what befell their fate yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, probably not great. The Confederate forces of the 1800 that were there in in entirety once you get the 32nd that was there Mm -hmm. They they only lost thirty six killed, one hundred and thirty three wounded, and five missing. Uh, the missing ones must have just like died and just not been accounted for, because yeah. know, they're not captured. Probably got chucked into the ocean or something. <laughs> Stop. Or in, they're in the moat. They're buried in the wall. Yeah, uh, that is a awful lot. I know. That's like, I'm, always, That's I'm, I'm typically shocked about uh, how few deaths there are. In, in these Civil War battles, because it's mostly wounded or missing or whatever, the casualties this are is, high, this the is, deaths are low. This, That's a lot of deaths. Uh, this is for like that many people in that short of a battle. Well, for, for, for yeah, for five thousand men having over a, a, you know that's that's one fifth of them are, are cash over one fifth are casualties, yeah. almost two fifths are casualties. That that's high. 
Um, but you know, in the grand scheme of numbers, this is why I say well, this is right. more of a skirmish. Well, because like, if you look at like any of the other battles we talked about, those are that's nothing numbers. That's right. But of the scale of this, it's just it yeah, seems just high. yeah. Because of the scale of like our normal lot. battles, it's like fifty thousand plus people. Right. This is five thousand dudes, and you know we've got almost two thousand casualties. <laughs> yeah, nearly half. Forty percent. That's not great. That's not great. That's not great. Um, unlike Glory, though, uh, th- there are survivors of the fifty fourth Massachusetts. I don't know how many. Star- like, I don't have a rough number of how many were actually engaged prior to right. the start of this. What they're ready at fifty fourth Massachusetts. I don't know because there were some skirmishes that they had, they had participated beforehand. They they had been fighting beforehand, so I don't. They weren't at full strength. Uh, right. But uh, 300 and, uh, 315 actually do survive the battle. Oh, wow. So that's not bad. That's probably about half. That's half. There's this, great, probably. there's this great scene where Matthew Broderick's like, if this man goes down, who's going to grab the flag? And, and Denzel Washington steps up and is like, I will do it. I'll grab the flag. And then you see the scene where Denzel Washington just gets, just gets fucking mowed down. Now, in reality... With the flag? Yeah, with the flag. With the flag. He picks the flag up. Y'all, He's y'all like, get out of here. And he gets, like, instantly shot. Yeah, get the hell out of here with your grab the flag. If that gets mowed down, I'm grabbing his gun or bullets. Right? Like, Here's the thing about it. What, so, what are you doing with a flag in a battle? Side note. Who brings a flag to note, a gunfight? Side note. If you're the flag corps, the first guy with the flag has no gun. He's got no weapons. The two guys next to him, no guns, no weapons. The Why two guys, would you be a part of this? The two guys next to them have weapons but aren't supposed to be using it. The two guys next to them Decorative. have the weapons and actually can use them. So, uh, <laughs> I don't want the fucking flag! No. Leave it! Leave it! <laughs> this is cloth! Maybe. It means nothing! It's a symbol! And by the way, the Union troops, the white, the white stars... They're the national. Yeah. They're the national flag. That's that's. This is an official. This is an official flag. After the gold stars, it's just a battle flag. So it's not really an official symbol of the. So if we lose it, who cares? So I I just maybe Zoom this it. is like a bad uh, practice to keep up that is left over from previous wars where you just have people marching around and you can tell from you know the hills where the things. Maybe we're past that and you need to leave get rid of the flag get already. Rid of the flag. Leave the flag at home. Yeah, I'm leave the flag at home. I don't. But with all that said, because how much we care about flags, yeah. In reality, the guy who does wind up saving the flag is named William Carney, and he's going to be given the Medal of Honor for his actions on recovering and returning the unit's flag to the Union lines. So he he risks well, his life well to grab there. the flag and bring um, it back, and that's what gets again. you the medal. I'm not discouraging, like it's no, brave. And he did I'm, great. He, he did, did the great. Thing. Uh, but but that's the Medal of Honor, not saving lives. No, the Not flag. killing a million right, people, yeah. like no, picking the flag the up flag. and bringing it back. Yeah, that, yep, that's it. All you need. So in reality, the movie should have had Denzel Washington like pick the flag up and go, we're getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got it. Let's go home. But he didn't. He gets shot and dies. Yep. Like Great it. performance by Denzel Washington in the movie, by the way, too. I mean, and Morgan Freeman's everything. phenomenal anyways, too. Yeah, so I mean, this is an all-star cast, Matthew like Broderick. He, I mean, Matthew Broderick, the, the, the dude, I don't know his name, but the dude that plays the fucking, you know, he's great from The Princess Bride. And the, mm-hmm. and the, yeah. and the there, it's a good, it's a good, it's a it's solid. A I just wish it would be, re, like, not re, like, can we just refilm it today with actual, because there is no good Civil War movie with actual, like, blood and gore and, like, tell you what yeah. the civil war was actually like like people fucking losing an arm going like there's no saving private ryan scene on the beaches of normandy where the guy's like picking up his arm going hey medic can you sew this back on well, I, I don't there's think that happened that. back during the civil war people just marched yeah. in a straight line towards each other shot and then a couple died and then they went home <laughs> so uh, he does get the medal of honor but he and he's considered the first african-american soldier to get the medal of honor although not really because he doesn't actually receive his medal of honor until oh, 1900 no. but his oh, actions okay. were in 1863 now the first now, so he was given it in 1863 though. no he was giving it in 1900 no. he, he got the medal oh in it was like retroactive yeah okay. retroactive he got the medal in 1900 like like a couple of years prior to before he died he okay i was gonna the, the first the <laughs> first this is a post-portum no part of no no, no it's post- not first part mortem no, not post-mortem mortem, 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 mortem yeah pregnancy. different yeah it's yeah. not part. Right. he he gets it while he's still alive now the first okay. african-american soldier to actually get like actually receive not for when he did the thing but actually receive it right uh was was robert blake who actually got his in 1864 so oh so like during the war during the war he got his still so yeah so okay um 
shout out to Robert Blake because he's he's been ignored by history now. Um, the entire 54th Massachusetts is honored for their bravery and their actions. Uh, because of their actions, it spurs more enlistments for African American soldiers for the Union Army. Okay. There we get something like two hundred and some odd thousand plus. I, I might be low on the number. Wow. I didn't I didn't write it down, but they have a very so large they... African American volunteer. Yeah, you know, so essentially all the all these escaped slaves and and just and free, and freed men of the north, yeah. Freed, um, they they saw, hey, uh, they're giving respect to us. Let's fight us. Yeah. yeah, like okay, I'll I'll join up if they're gonna respect us and you know celebrate it. Why not? Um, you know, and they will. There will be several African Americans that actually do get do get official commissioned ranks, you know, beyond that. Now, standardly, it's the unions are still led by white guys. But uh, right. but there are, there are, you know, even in the Civil War, there are some commissioned uh, African-American soldiers that do get. Yeah, and, so, well, and this is all because so, of the action of the 54th Massachusetts. Um, so basically what happens is, is, is after this battle, they go, holy shit, they can die as good as white men? <laughs> Send them in! <laughs> <laughs> They're real good at that. They are too. There, everybody dies equally. You mean a bullet kills everybody equally? Hmm. Have at it. How about that? Also, because of their fierce fighting, though, um, captured African American soldiers were recognized as enemy combatants by the Confederacy, and was ordered to actually treat all uh, all uniformed soldiers the same. So, so if you got captured, even if you were an African American, you weren't going to be sold into slavery. Although, instead of being sold into slavery, you got shipped to places like Andersonville, which was so much better than being a slave because you didn't, you weren't fed and you got starved and beaten. And so they, they, got, they got all kinds of shit. They got sent places to get lynched or beat or yeah they still they still die andersonville and... like i don't know like a slave or andersonville a slave or andersonville they're both horrendous options yeah i don't know which one's worse uh but uh yeah i don't know if i i would not want to be in andersonville at all that was a very awful prison camp um i mean the whole civil war in that time just sounds like shit so yeah i don't want to live there at all yeah the, 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 get a time machine go back to the civil war no nah, i'm good <gasps> Die of dysentery, dying of shitting myself because we don't know how to wash our hands. Yeah, no, I'm good. I don't want to do that. No thanks. No thanks. I'll die of COVID because we don't know how to wash our hands. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, at least it's just because I can't breathe, not shit in my pants. Uh, all the dead were buried in a mass grave in the fort walls, including Shaw, who was buried uh, with with his soldiers, which was considered an insult. You can't bury a white officer with with his colored troops. Considered an but insult. Now they but. But like he led them, and they died to get like yeah no and see why, and that's Johnny you're right I, you're, you're you're right because Shaw's family had the opportunity to uh, to reinter his his like to remove his body from that mass grave after the war and place it you know somewhere else and his, sure. the family said no like those were his that's, men yeah, that he led why would the reason why you do would mass you, graves wanna... is so that they can all be together because yeah. they stood together fought together well, and died together you do together. mass graves because it's a hell of a lot easier to big one big uh, mass grave <laughs> right but as far as making it seem to be an important thing and yeah, a gotcha. meaningful thing that's what it's yeah. for yeah you know, so they, you know, so shaw's family does re refuse to to reintern him uh oh yeah those dead bodies yeah they're gonna come back as an offensive weapon because uh you see the what? ultimate zombies yeah you see the ultimate fate of <laughs> fort wagner is as i suggested it to begin with we're just gonna bombard it and and starve them out and as we're bombarding it those 30 foot high sandbars where the bear you know the bodies are yeah, buried yeah. uh they're getting hit with artillery shells right uh -huh. So what's what's happening to those bodies? Oh, God. They're getting kicked up out of those mass graves, and just the smell alone. Can you oh. imagine? Now it's an offensive weapon. You got the artillery shells That's bombarding been, so it's you. Been, uh, You've got the these bodies, bodies have been partially up. partially cooked in the sand bodies. Yeah, partially, partially cooked in the sand bodies because <laughs> you can bury just, pigs, right? Oh no, you got to put. Yeah. Pigs first. Okay. Anyway, uh, so uh, so the ultimate the 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 fate, which again, glory gets wrong. Glory's like the union never took the fort. Well, you're right. We never took it by force. Yeah, but uh, but on uh, on September seventh, eighteen sixty three, after sixty days of constant bombardment and fighting, uh, the uh, the Confederates are like, yeah, screw this shit, we're out of here, and they abandon the mm -hmm. fort because we don't have any food. Those bodies really smell. Go ahead and you only keep have it. so much ammo. Yeah, you only have so many bullets before you run out. 